Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about the PS Vita. This has grown on me over the years. I, I was, wasn't a huge fan when it first came out. This system can do a lot, and I wanna to explain to you why this is one of my favorite handhelds out there. I was thinking the other day, what are some of my favorite handhelds of all time? If I were to go with nostalgia, I'd probably go with the original Game Boy. Grew up with that, love that system. Today, I would probably say the Switch is probably my favorite handheld. However, the Vita is a very close second, and this one, Shout out to my good friend Kirk, aka Hubert Addict One, on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel below in case you guys want to check him out. He hacked this my, my Vita for me, which is awesome. So I'm able to, to to load games. I can play. I can do things on this Vita that most Vitas can't, which is pretty incredible, including playing uh, emulators. I can also hook this up to what they call a, a Vita dock, and I can sync this to my TV, uh, just like you would a Switch, which is awesome. So I'll hook, I can pair it with my PS4 controller hook it up to my TV, I'll show how that works in a second. I just want to talk about the Vita in this video and explain to you why you should own a Vita in 2020. The Vita came out in 2012 in the North America, it came out in Japan a year earlier in 2011. Uh, was the, P uh, the PSP, the original Sony handheld, uh, sold much better than the Vita and, and Sony supported the Vita for a couple years really with a lot of first party great titles. They eventually it turned into more of a, a system for, for indie devs, there's still a lot of great hidden gems for the Vita. A lot of great games for the Vita. Uh, and I, this is a Model 1. This is the, actually a launch version of this. I got it when it first came out. A lot of people prefer this version opposed to the Model 2 because this version has what they call an OLED or OLED screen opposed to an LCD screen. It's brighter. Some people claim it's better uh, visually. I haven't really played much of the version 2 to compare, to be honest with you, but the screen does look sharp. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to show you how you, you, you hook up the Vita dock. I'm going to explain to you kind of what this is. When I say hack, what exactly does that mean? Uh, we'll go from there and thanks for watching. Okay, so here's a closer look at the Vita. As I mentioned before, this is the, the Model 1. This is the first generation. This is like launch model. Um, and I've really enjoyed the Vita over the years. And so even if you don't have it quote hacked, you don't have any of these special features I'm about to show you, it's still a system really worth getting. A lot of great games for it. Uh, I love the fact that it's got the, the touch screen in the back or touch pad in the back. It's also got the touch screen in the front. Let's put, turn this bad boy on. Uh, top left corner there boot it up. You'll see right away it kind of looks different, the boot up screen. And um, yeah, the battery life on this thing surprisingly works pretty well, uh, lasts quite a while. And uh, the screen, man, the screen really is very sharp. It's not quite as sharp as like a PlayStation 3, but it's definitely close. You can see there that's uh, Kubrick Attic put his, his name there. It's kind of cool. So you put these these bubbles or folders in different applications. I've got quite a few games. I've got 10 games for each one of these bubbles. So I've got hundreds of games to choose from. Um, I've got games like, let's see, click on this bubble here. Uh, you got uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Ratchet & Clank. Go back. This, where's the game? I'll show you a really fun game. Let's do this one. Uncharted. Uh, I remember when this game came out, uh, really took really good use. This was one of the early launch titles where the games came out for the system, but uh, really takes good use of both touch screens. Kind of shows the capability of the system itself. And it, there's manuals. You got these digital manuals, which is cool. Loading time's not too bad. It's coming off of a disc or a CD, not a CD, but a, a card. Still, still, we gotta go. So you move around. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, let's go back to PlayStation. Let's close this out. I'll show you how to hook up the, sync up the PS4 controller. So let's do that real quick. Go here, go to settings, start settings. Let's go to, uh, where was devices, uh, Bluetooth, and then um, turn this on. Now I'm already synced, so I can see I can scroll here. So that's really cool, so I can kind of move out now. I still need to navigate. I've noticed that even though the touchpad's here, I can scroll up, but I can't necessarily choose which bubble I want. So I still got to use the, the, the unit for that. In some games, like with Uncharted, for example, uh, it utilizes both touchscreens right at the back and the front. I can't necessarily do that with this controller. So some games aren't compatible with a PS4 controller, but the fact that you can use it, I mean, there's... 
What's a, what's a game? Check this out. Most wanted. So I turned down the music for, for copyright reasons, but you can see I'm actually controlling the game using my, my PS4 for controller. Pretty good frame rate too on the system for handheld. This is Need for Speed, most wanted. So I hit the PlayStation button here, and I can go and just close it out like this. And I can again scroll like this by touching this, and that's pretty cool. Um, let's show you this thing right here. The other thing you might need for the, I keep talking about this Vita Doc. This is what it looks like. This is a Raspberry Pi, and it's a program for the Raspberry Pi. So you, what you need is a Raspberry Pi, uh, and you have, of course, the, the power cable and all that. And what this does, it hooks up. There's a charge cable, USB. You hook it up to your Raspberry Pi and you turn this on. You sync it up, let's check it out. And it upscales to the TV, which is awesome. So there was a thing, of course, you may be aware of called uh, a PlayStation TV unit. And what that did was it streamed uh, some, it wasn't compatible with all Vita games, but you could basically play the games on your TV. It didn't really scale very good. Uh, it was only available for a couple of years. It retailed for hundred bucks. This is a much, less expensive route to go to. This does scale it. Uh, it looks really good on TV for, for a handheld. And it works very similar to, to, the, to the Switch. So all you have to do is just basically, once you have this plugged in, you plug this cord into this, the Vita, like you're gonna charge it. And it'll automatically detect it, and it'll take that image and put it on TV. So let's take a closer look how that works. So I have my uh, PS Vita dock uh, hooked up. This is my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm going to plug in the cord into my Vita power cord and watch what happens. And right there you can see my screen right to my TV. It scales at full screen, which is awesome. For some reason, I'm not quite sure why it's uh, showing, it's not really charging it. I'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure if that's, I noticed the other night when I was playing this, it was charging it. So maybe just at the, right now at this moment, it's not charging my, my Vita. It's interesting. but. Uh, I've got to use my Vita, like I said before, to touch screen. Not quite sure how to figure out how to touch the bubbles using touch screen on the, the PS4 controller. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out some games. Uh, I'll show you some other features that this can do. We've got a, hand, a bunch of uh, PlayStation Vita games. Uh, see, or these are PSP games, rather. Uh, let's check out Lego Batman. See, now it shows in the corner, it's, you can see that charging symbol there in the corner. So it is charging uh, here and there. I don't think the system will necessarily die when it's hooked up to this. I really enjoy these uh, Lego games. They're fun. Fun to play. I just want to get to the game. Here we go. I gotta get these guys. There's Robin. So yeah, no no lag from TV to system. Which is awesome. Let's exit this. Uh, they've got various applications. One thing I want to show you, this is cool too. Check this out. Go to emulator, go to RetroArch. So i got RetroArch on here. And I've got a lot of different consoles on here. RetroArch is kind of laid out menu-wise, very similar to like what the PlayStation 2 was. You guys remember that menu layout? So you can go to, uh, let's go to load content. Go down to ROMs. I've got different uh, different folders here of uh, systems. So uh, check out the Lynx. One of my favorite handhelds there. Blue Lightning. You can click on the emulator. Here it is. I'm playing this on my Vita 
on my TV through my Vita. Came in the late 80s. Okay, so. Oh, look at that. I inverted it. <laughs> let's show another game here. Let's do. Um... Oh, that's the wrong folder. You just gotta write, find the right folders to go to. Most of these systems are kind of, you know, earlier generation consoles, right? Nothing like Dreamcast or anything like that. But the PC Engine, Sega, th uh, Sega 32X, uh, Super Nintendo, let's get Super Nintendo. Everything's alphabetical. You can skip down quick. Let's go to a random one here. What? What should we check out? Let's do bonkers. You can choose your emula emulator. Here it is. It takes a few seconds. Recognize my PlayStation 4 controller. I forgot Capcom had did in this game. This is, uh, I believe, a show part of the cartoon Disney Afternoon block of cartoons later on in this, the, that series. That was more of a DuckTales slash Chippendale. Oh. Not sure, quite sure what I'm supposed to do. I can jump on him? Okay. Oh, I can jump on that guy. Or that, those balloons. That's kind of weird. Ah. Oh. It's not the emulation, it's me, I'm terrible at this, so. Anyway, you can kind of see that overall, do I, can I jump high? How do I get to that tall one? Love the, the scrolling effect, though. It's like a platformer. Anyway, guys, you can get the idea. Let me exit this real quick. Um, yeah, the Vita, you can do a lot with it. And the community right now is, is really strong, good group of people. Um, and there's just a lot of options with the video you can do today. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys think. What are some games you recommend both for the the, the Vita, uh, PSP? What, what games do you recommend to check out? Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll put a link below with some additional information. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.